In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down structuralism as a sociological concept. I'll be going through its origins, notable theorists, the main concepts, critiques, and also how structuralism is or isn't relevant today. Initially, I was going to cover postmodernism in this video too, but it's, it's going to be way too long to do that. So I'm going to do that in an in a upcoming video. If you have any other theories that you'd like me to cover, definitely let me know in the comments. Um, but before we get into the video, let me give my usual disclaimer that the contents of this video is academic research and for educational purposes only, my views are my own, and I'm neither condoning or rejecting the theory covered today. Um, obviously keep all comments kind of respectful. So yeah, let's get on into the video. So now let's talk about the origins of structuralism. The fundamental question in sociology and for much of like life, I suppose, is what is society made up of? Like, why are we here? And structuralism is based on the premise that society is made up of social structures. And as Heidbrand says, structures are defined as the patterns and forms of social relations and combinations among a set of constituent social elements made up of many different components. Structuralism was founded by someone called Claude Levi Strauss in the 1900s. And his basic idea was that savage and civil societies are fundamentally made up of the same characteristics. Now, problematic view of the majority of the world, aka savage societies aside, these characteristics are basically social relations um, and how society is made up of structures. So, for example, events are explained by the result of actions on by other parts of society. So, you know, you don't know one without knowing the other. So it's the same way as not knowing joy without knowing sadness. Um, it's all about interactions. So it's not really like a theory, like traditional ones like Marxism or functionalism or feminism. It's rather a way of like seeing the world as we'll explain in the next bit. Let's talk about some notable theorists of the structuralist tradition. So apart from Levi Strauss, there is Ferdinand de Saussure, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. And whilst Strauss related structuralism to the social sciences, Saussure was actually the first to talk about this concept, but in relation to linguistics and language. Um, he argued that language is meaningless without the rules and structures surrounding those words. So like punctuation, um, context, um, the way you structure like grammar and everything. So that's the kind of thing he was going with in terms of structure. Um, and Karl Marx, the founder of Marxism, obviously his main idea was that society is made out of conflict and the bourgeoisie and the proletariat are constantly fighting for power. Um, or rather the bourgeoisie is always oppressing the proletariat. Um, and now we have Emile Durkheim, who is the key proponent of functionalism. And one of the main ideas is that socialization is what keeps society running. Socialization of people into norms and values keeps society running. And then we have Louis Althusser, the main guy who talked about structural Marxism. Uh, even though he never said he was explicitly a structuralist, he's still generally categorized under that. Um, and it's interesting because those who are at the forefront of the structuralist movement, some of the people like Giddens, who I'm not including in this list, um, consider it to be an idea of the past. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, not to say that structuralism is an entirely dead concept, but it's just something to know. So in terms of main concepts of structuralism, let's not confuse structuralism with structural relation, which is the brainchild of Anthony Giddens. And first of all, we'll need to understand these two terms, two terms, epistemology and ontology. Ontology is basically the study of being, how the world is, right? How the world works, like what it fundamentally is. So for example, saying everything is made out of atoms and energy, that is an ontology, that is a worldview, that is a lens through which everything happens and is happening. Um, and then you have epistemology, which is the study of knowledge and how to access rational knowledge. So, for example, when we say everything is made out of atoms and energy, epistemology is saying, how do we know that everything is made out of atoms and energy? Can we even know? Is there a way to know? And what is that way, if that makes sense? Um, so structure is defined as the arrangement of and relations between the parts or elements of something complex 
thanks Google for that definition. Um, but structure obviously is the main concept, the main idea of structuralism. And structuralism analyzes and examines how underlying structures affect us, society, and our everyday life. Um, and so both ontology, how things are, and epistemology, how we know how things are, are products of social forces and structures. Are you still with me? Are you following? <laughs> it's a bit, it's, it is a little bit confusing, even as I'm saying this. Structural theories are basically arguing that society has more influence than individuals in it. So if you think about your everyday life right you're gonna go to school you're gonna go to uni you're going to work you go pick up your coffee at starbucks and then you go for lunch at prep or something i don't know um those might seem very mundane to you but for structuralists they say that underlying structures and how society is built on those structures actually affects your daily life affects how you're going to work and picking up that starbucks some examples of structuralist theories are functionalism, Marxism, and feminism. Those are the ones that say that there are underlying intrinsic structures that govern the way society works. So you have functionalism, which I said before, you know, it relies on socialization and everything working together as an organism. That is the structure on which society lies. But in terms of Marxism, it's based on conflict and the power dynamic between proletariats and the bourgeoisie and for feminists and for feminism as a theory it's obviously based on conflict it the structure that society is built on is the patriarchy so you know everything that happens under that um and all of that all of them would cite social institutions as having a key part to play in the structure of society so media school uh, or education healthcare. Um, what else is there? Religion, family, all of these are built into the structure of society. And that is what makes us who we are. And that is how the structure trickles down to the individual level. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I know this can be a bit difficult to follow. So I hope this is making sense so far. Now for the main critiques of structuralism. The main thing is like, is this an adequate way of viewing the world, right? We know this is a way, this is a worldview, this is an ontology, you know, and here are some of the main critiques. Number one is it's too simplistic as explained in my Marxism Explained video. This is, you know, obviously something that relates to Marxism as well because Marxism is a structuralist based theory because society isn't just governed by structures, you know, it, it's not predetermined. There's no such like things like fate per se in that way, such as, you know, because the structure is like this, it means that individuals are gonna act like this. You can't, you can't predict that we're humans, right? So that leads on to my second critique, which is it's deterministic. We're not pre-programmed individuals. We have free will. And we're not living in a system that's kind of panned out for us. This isn't some sort of like Truman show, which if you haven't seen that film, you should 100% do so. Um, we have our own desires that we can decide whether or not to act upon. So that's just something to know. Like when it's really easy when we're thinking of theories and we're thinking of, you know, injustices that individuals are kind of just passive and going along with everything when it isn't we aren't passive you know i'm choosing to film this video today you're choosing to watch it <laughs> right you don't have to um no one's sitting down and forcing you to watch this video um even though you know while you're here you should like and comment and subscribe if you haven't already but anyway um the third critique is it doesn't have to be either or right it doesn't have to be structure versus agency they, it doesn't have to be an opposition. They can work together. Um, they can do um, work together um, to shape our behavior and society. Um, so if you'd like to know, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how we don't always have to be in this either or black and white thinking, I'd highly recommend you read Brene Brown's book, Braving the Wilderness. Um, but something that is a kind of halfway house between structuralism and you know, having free agency postmodernism is structuration um, by Anthony Giddens, which we might do another video on. Let me know if you want that. Um, but yeah, now, even though what we've just discussed are valid criticisms of structuralism, you can't really deny that structures don't have some sort of role to play in society today. So here's a few points. 
um, social institutions still play a massive role in society, right? So such as in education, giving us the knowledge and the way in which to gain that knowledge. Um, and then we go through like university and school system, maybe, or and going to work and then working for the rest of our lives whilst raising a family and all of that. Um, but yeah, you know, like th- those things still happen quite a lot. And you can't really deny that a lot of structures have set life up to be this way, you know? Um, and divisions also exist. Like, unfortunately, we don't live in an equal world. Um, inequality exists and in- inequality is not inevitable. It doesn't need to be. It's just that this current system that we live in needs it, aka capitalism. Um, so capitalism is yet another example of a structure and a system that we are still living under. And the third point that structuralism is still relevant today is that we're not yet in a postmodern world even though postmodernists might argue that we're now like all for ourselves individualism agency is everything choice you know everything's really fragmented you know that there's some order in society still like we're not like chaotic all of us even though my energy is quite chaotic i think (laughs) um but yeah we're individuals and still have agency but unfortunately that doesn't mean that we have control of like everything that happens to us especially external things that we can't control so that was my brief introduction to structuralism did you learn something new did this help is there still questions that you have let me know in the comments below and if there is any other theory in particular that you'd like me to cover next in this explained series hope you're enjoying it and check out the other videos in this series and i'll see you next time bye